tutorial number 49 of our series. We're almost done. We're almost done with the year. Let's hope we reach 50 tutorials for this year and next year we'll have a new aim of 100. Um, so now with this tutorial, um, I'm going to show you how to do um, what I would call a, a barely usable coffee table. <laughs> Right, and it's something that I really enjoy doing. It's these um, not not barely usable things, but these design objects that are easy to do in Grasshopper, but quite hard to 3D model. So what I'm aiming for, and by the way, I already have the definition done. So these are just my going to be my notes. Um, I will look at this definition if I get stuck or if I don't remember how I did it. Um, so the aim is to make a coffee table that has a surface, a top surface, as if it was a bunch of ripples in a pond. You know, when you have a water pond and you throw some rocks at, uh, on it, into it, at it, um, it, they make these ripples. But if you throw two rocks, they make these, uh, how is that called? interfering waves, like interfering ripples. Either way, let's, let's begin and then we will figure it out from, uh, from there. So immediately I look at it. <laughs> so the way I'm going to build this is I'm going to create a rectangle, right? It's going to be, uh, f first we'll start with a rectangle and then we will cut out a circle from that rectangle. So I will make a rectangle, rectangle, there we go. And I will give it a size. So I th I'm thinking of something like 500 by 500, something like that, right? So this is just a rectangle and XY is just the size of the rectangle. So I just create a slider by double clicking and typing in 500. All right. And then we will divide surface. We will use divide surface to divide that rectangle into a grid of points. And that grid of points is going to have quite a few points actually. But for now, let's do 50 by 50 we will need to increase it quite a bit. Even with 50 by 50, it's, it's a lot of points. Then we will move those points around according to certain values, uh, which I will get from, from my notes right here. That's that layer. Um, and once after we've finished moving the points, we will uh, rebuild the surface from the moved points. So from the grid of points, we'll build the surface. And I believe the tool that does that is under surface, under utilities. Um, it's called, it is not under utilities. Is it under primitive? I don't remember. Oh my God. No, it's under free form, of course. Surface from points. There we go. So this guy right here, it asks us for points, so we give them points, uh, but it asks us um, for, actually, let me do full names so that you can follow better. And there we go. So it asks us for um, a list of points while this, uh, by having this wire uh, show up as dashed, I can see that this is not a list, it's a data tree. So we need to get rid of that data tree information. I will right click on the points output here and I'll choose flatten, which will put all of the data branches into one single list. And now this uh, node right here will not complain anymore. Um, and then it asks us for a U count. You would think that if I just say, well, if we divide the surface with U count of 50 and we give it the same slider here of 50, it's gonna work. Well, not really. The reason why it's not working is with this surface, even though it's divided by 50, it produces 51 points. A much easier explanation would be if I divided up the surface to three parts, right? So one, two, three segments. So one, two, three by one, two, three segments. You know, but it does produce one, two, three, four points, four by four points. So it's always plus one for this number right here. 
right? Or minus one for this, whichever you want. I will use plus one for this. So the way we do this is we just right click on the U count, we go to expression and we type in X plus one. That's minus. I don't know how to type plus on this keyboard. X plus, <laughs> come on, oh my God. I'll do it X plus one, there we go. And now it works, now it creates a surface. Great, let's jump back to 50. Okay, so we divided up the rectangular surface into points, um, into a grid of points, and now we rebuild the surface from the grid of points, which means that if we move the points, <clears throat> these points, and then we rebuild, rebuild the surface from the moved points, we will have like surface patterns happening. All right, so let's, um, I think we can do that. Uh, it's a little bit rough, but yeah, let's do that. So a very simple example would be to uh, create a point or rather let's create two points, this one here and this one here, creating two points, reference, referencing them in as points, set multiple points, there we go, those two are here now, and then using, and by the way, I'm in top view, so I'm doing everything flat for now. Uh, so taking those points and saying, okay, we have a grid of points here, and we have our two attractor points here, what if we pull, pull point, what if we pull, um, how does that work, wait, uh, these points, our grid, to these two attractors right here. Then it's going to give us a distance. And what I can do is I can just say, uh, this is the simplest version of it. I can just say, okay, so then these points, according to the distance uh, from which they are from the closest attractor, either this or this, um, I can show you actually line. I'll just draw a line like that. So these are the distances that it's measuring. Um, let me hide that as well and hide that as well, right? So these are two attractors and these are the distances that um, the pull point is measuring. So these are the values that we're getting. And I can see that according to those distances, it should be moved in Z uh, along Z vector by the distance. And then I can use the moved versions of the points to reconstruct the surface. Um, of course, we need to look at it in the perspective view, but this is what how it's going to work then, right? Cool, but not that's not something that we want. Instead, what we want is ripples. So this is where it gets a little bit more tricky and we, where we need to think about it. So it's not just a regular uh, movement in Z, right? The further the grid points are away from these uh, uh, attractor points, the higher they move. Uh, instead of that, we will use a sinus, sinus curve, like a, a sinus value. And I can actually show you um, again how that would work with the sinus in between. We already are getting some sort of a uh, you can, can't really see that well, but we are getting some sort of a pattern emerging. And if I were to increase the, the amount of points, you would see the pattern becoming more and more complex. It's not something that I... So we are basically just taking the sinus value here. Uh, it's not something that... Um, that, that I want to do, uh, rather I want to create, hmm, rather we want to add up the sinus values first and foremost. So here we get 10,000. No, that's incorrect. Pull point. Okay. 
So this is going to be hard to explain. Right now the way pull point works, um, again with the line tool, right now the way pull point works is it measures the distance from each grid point to the closest, closest is the key one, a uh, key word here, uh, closest uh, attractor point, right? <clears throat> That's not good enough. We want to measure the distance from each grid point to the closest attractor point, yes, but also to the to the other one, uh, basically to all of the attractor points. So what I want to do is instead of choosing closest, I want to right click and choose uh, and right click on the pull point tool and untick the closest only. So now, it's going to crash. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, no, no. Oh no. What did I do? Since we didn't do that, it's going to... Yeah, that's, that's my bad. Every time when you're creating a data tree structure, you need to make sure that it's not going to force itself into a loop of, of just increasing the amount of geometry exponentially. Let me pause the video for a second and... All right, we are back. Um, so, sorry about that. That that was my bad. I just crashed the, the whole script, but basically what we want to do is just instead of having it set to closest, right-clicking on pull point command uh, or tool and choosing or rather unticking the closest only. So now for every grid point that we see here, we will get two distances, right? One distance to this attractor point right here and the second distance to this. So those two distances can be, um, can be calculated or, or can be used to, uh, to create interference values. So if I just grab the distances and run them through the sinus um, values and use mass addition on them, right, like that. Mass addition means it just adds the two sinus values together and get the result. Oh, no, 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 no. Disable that. Sorry about that. We need this to be flattened because this comes in flattened. Uh, so the output of the mass addition also needs to be flattened. Enable that. You can see the inter interference happening. Interference patterns. Right? I wonder how it's going to work with one. It's a little bit strange. We will, uh, uh, we will be remapping the values so that it's not uh, so, so weird. Um, but for now, at least we can see that interference is, is indeed happening between these points. All right, so actually now let's start remapping the values. So I will make this full names and I will create a gap between the distance and the sinus so that I can see um, so that I can actually see what what I, I have been doing before um, bleh, sorry lost my mind mind for a second in this gap right here, I will create what's called a frequency, uh, right? So sinus works in values between zero and uh, pi. Wait, it takes in a value of zero and, and then it, uh, pi, and then it gives us a result between zero and one. Okay, so we will remap these numbers, these values, uh, these distances uh, from their source. So I will say bounds, give me bounds. Bounds just basically gives us the boundaries of all of the distances, but since they are here, um, 
they're coming here in different branches, different data branches that I can actually show you here. Uh, there's 10,000 of them. I need to flatten out this input right here so that um, all of the values come in as a single list so that the, the bounds component actually can find the smallest and the largest value of the distances of all of the distances. So that's our source domain. And then our target domain is between 0 and 1, but it should be between 0 and pi. Because, yes, it should be between 0 and pi. Because if we give this value a 0, and then if uh, it's going to give us 1, if we give it a value of pi, it's going to give us a value of 0. Okay, so this comes in, this gets remapped to values that Sinus understands and gets plugged in here. And now nothing works for some reason. I believe nothing works because the values are so small. Let me try to multiply or not multiply yeah let's try multiplying the result by a hundred just to make it a little bit more aggressive okay so it, it does seem to work it's just that um, the values are very very um, intense or, or not intense but the gradient is super big so now what i'm going to do is from these mapped values actually am i doing the correct thing um, I'm almost doing the correct thing. Yeah, it should be fine. It should be fine. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, I had to check my notes. So, <clears throat> these values here, uh, these remapped values, can be multiplied by a number, let's say 100. And I believe if we multiply it by 100, that is how many waves we will get, 100 waves. Is this true? It actually didn't crash, it, it calculated as expected, it's just that something took a while to calculate, I don't know what, but just in case I'm going to disable the calculation of all of this crap right here and just calculate this part and come, with this I will come back to 50. The, the, the slider, I'll turn it back to 50 so that it's not calculating that many uh, points. So this is what we get. Okay, so of course this second multiplication is right now super intense and we don't, we don't really need it to be inten uh, that intense. But here, oh sorry, here is our frequency. So this is where we control the frequency. And it's basically 100. Also, why does it take so long to, to show up? Because everything here kind of calculates in 12 milliseconds, 12 milliseconds, 21 milliseconds. So frequency is 50. Super intense. Okay, but here you can see, right? As I'm changing the values, the frequency increases or decreases. So for now, I'm going to leave it as like, let's say 35, whatever, some sort of a number. 35 and we have our wavy surface, but there's still more stuff to do. So first of all, um, the output that we get here is going to be almost in between. Wait, is it going to be? Yeah, it's going to be in between minus two and two. Uh, which in millimeters is not that much. So what we can do is we can, can we just multiply it by a number? Multiplication. Yes, we can. Oh, we multiply it by like five different numbers. Hmm. Okay, sure. 
So first of all, let's let's specify that where we put these points, we want to be able to put down a cup on our table. So that means that every like these points have an influence rate radius surrounding them where there cannot be any waves right so there is going to be a multiplication come on multiplication here where well actually while we're at it let's let's use first multiplication to just increase the the waves uh, how, how intense the waves are so right now they're in between minus two and two let's say um five so the waves should be like one centimeter high um oops that's the wrong <laughs> there we go the, the vectors need to be multiplied okay by five so that's one centimeter uh, the, the largest waves are not one but rather two centimeters high that might be too much we will fix that in just a second okay so that's um another group which we will call wave aggressiveness how aggressive the waves are all right let's do one more multiplication where we say that if a point if if any one of these grid points where are they these grid points if any one of these grid points are closer than some number uh, to to this value then there shouldn't be any waves it should be just a circle so we need to do that okay um, i believe i used pull right yes i used another pull okay let's do it this way so we will pull again pull points we will pull these grid points to our attractors right and here are um, distances uh, here it is going to be indeed closest point right uh, because we only care about uh, the distance to the closest attractor and we will remap our distances <clears throat> where we will say that anything larger anything that is larger than let's say four centimeters 40 millimeters so our source domain is going to be at maximum 40 anything that that's larger than that should have a value of one and everything that is smaller should have a value of zero. Let's see how it, this plays out. I, I can't do quick math in my head. I think that if now we use this, uh, that mapped numbers as our multiplication input, the, our second multiplication. So this one is wave aggressiveness. This is the second multiplication. If we use our remap numbers as multiplication input here and we substitute, then this happens shit okay so this happens because there's no cap so as the slider as the number increases the waves will get bigger and bigger the, the further away we go from it how did i solve this yeah we measure yeah we get that oh okay got it okay so that was very smart of me uh first of all we we ask is the distance 
from the grid points to the uh, attractor points smaller than 40, right? If it is smaller than 40, then it's going to need to pick a number from the remapped numbers here. If it's larger than 40, then it's going to pick a number that is 1. So once you, once you multiply something by 1, nothing changes, so it, this area will not get affected. Only the area within the 40 millimeter, millimeter radius will get affected. So pick and choose. We'll use pick and choose. And we will say that the pattern is smaller or equal to, like our check, whether or not the grid points distance is smaller or equal to 40. Uh, our stream zero is... So it's, if it's false, if it's not smaller than 40, then our stream zero needs to be our mapped values. But if it's true, then our stream one needs to be the number one. So I just created a panel with number one. Why is it orange? Input stream too short for pattern. Ah, okay. So the reason why it's orange is because the pattern has 2,601 values. Well, here we just give it a single number. So what I'll need to do is repeat data. I'll need to repeat the single number uh, 2,601 times. So I will just say, so I'm using repeat data and you can't really see it, but this is just a panel with one. Um, our length is, it needs to be exactly the same as the list length of this uh, smaller than output here. So I'll just measure list length and it's going to give me the value 2601. That's how many grid points we have connected like that. And then data output is going to come into stream one. So now this is not um, whining. And I can just use pick and choose output as my secondary multiplication. And it's not doing a thing. Um, did I mess up the streams? I think I messed up the streams. So let's try other way around. Stream zero comes in here. Stream one comes in here. Yes, okay. So I did mess it around. So this needs to come, come into stream zero. All right, so we have this going on. And as you can see here, that that um, fall off, that's not a four centimeter. I can actually show you see on R. Um, center and the radius needs to be 40. So this is the influence radius of my point. And it's actually ignoring quite a bit of it, only right in the middle, it's kind of making it flat. So the reason behind it is uh, that this remap numbers is a linear gradient, meaning that it's going to have a full on influence here and it's not going to have any influence on this edge, around this edge. I want to change the fall off of that gradient. So I can do that by using, I don't remember how it's called, uh, not param viewer, god damn it. Um, <laughs> input, is it under graph mapper? I'll use it, uh, I'll use graph mapper on it. So uh, my remap numbers comes into the graph mapper input. I'll right click on it and choose graph types. I'll just choose Bezier because that's the, uh, the one that I usually use and connect it instead of mapped which comes into stream one, I will connect the graph mapper. So virtually here, you don't see that anything changes. But if I start changing this up, this curve type, if I start changing this up, you can see that a larger portion of this whole thing becomes flat. That's all I wanted to do, make it flat. All right, so now we have, and by the way, if, if now I increase the the radius, it's going to increase the how much of the of this area is flat. So four centimeters 
uh, I think is fine. That's enough to put a cup. Okay. So this is this whole portion here is make surface for cup flat. Okay, so we have done that. So we have our wavy pattern and we have our two cups. We can make it for three cups and so on, but I will be testing out for two. So we do have our, our wavy pattern here. Um, I want to, what do I want to do next? Maybe I want to create a circle right in the middle of this of this rectangle because I, I did mention that I want a circular um, I, I do want to have a circular table so let me do a CNR circle center normal radius and my center point of the circle is going to be constructed from XYZ coordinates so construct point I'll plug that one into my circle input, the circle center input, and it's going to ask me what kind of coordinates do I want to use. I want this circle to be right in the middle of this rectangle. Oh, actually, I can just do it this way. Just measure the area of the rectangle. Get the centroid connected to the center, right like that. That's fine as well. And for the radius, I will not be using 500. Rather, I'll be using a slightly smaller radius. So for 500 minus 10. I'll just leave one centimeter. Um, oh. <laughs> okay, so that's um, that needs to be 500 divided by 2 minus 10, of course, naturally. Okay, so 500, I will right click on the A input. I can't uh, change it there. Where can I change it? Ah, let's just do it the old fashioned way. I will divide, I will take that slider 500, I will divide it by 2, set the data item to or let's just do it like that. So now it's 250 and then 250 minus 10 is 240 and now the my circle is offset from the edges of the rectangle by 10. Okay, that, that, that works out. Yeah. So now we have our circle. What do we do with it? Well, what I want to do with it is pull points again point I will be pulling uh, these the, this grid of these grid of points here to the circle and I'll get their distances and I'll do the exactly same thing as I did for um, for the cup surfaces making them flat I will make the edge of this flat and the way I'm going to do this is um, actually Pointed curve. Do I really care if it's point and curve? I don't really care. No, that's fine. Um, so I will remap. Let's just do it the old fashioned way. <laughs> I'll just take the whole group from the bottom, make surface uh, for cup flat, copy paste, control C, control V. Copy paste it up and here, um, let's delete that. Here for pull point, I will use circle as my geometry like that. And I can use a third, a third multiplication. Third multiplication like that. Pick and choose comes in here, gets multiplied. All right. Let me hide a bunch of stuff. So now you can see that around the edge it also becomes becomes flat. Cool. Um, let's change this up a bit. I don't want that edge to be... Or rather maybe let's do, let's do 40 centimeters again. That's fine. But rather I don't want it to be such a steep edge. 
so I will make it like I will make it like so maybe like that can we make it like that but actually like that sorry I'm just messing around with this for a bit seems to be good and this would be going down huh yeah okay so something like this only a little bit more flat around the edge Whew, okay we're almost there we're almost done so we have our surface here and we have our uh where, where's our circle there we go there's our circle i actually want to create a curve component curve component like that and just drag that curve component to like next to my surface from points just here and maybe i'll even do one thing that i really don't like doing i will change the wire display to hidden so that it's not that much in the way but i'll rename the curve to my uh let's say table output there we go table output so now what i want to do is take the surface and trim it with this curve will it work i hope it will work uh trim um trim with trim a curve with multiple regions i'm just trying to i'm just checking what kind of trim can i use there's mathematical brep plane no brep line no contour so these won't work surface split would work okay let's try surface split um, base surface this curves this how many fragments two fragments two trimmed surfaces list item with list item you can just choose which one you want so that's the wrong index uh, so it needs to be list item index one there we go so in your case if it's the wrong one just switch switch the slider and you'll get the correct one there's a way of how to always get the correct one but i don't want to do it okay so we have that done and now so the material from which i'm going to produce this table is 18 millimeters thick so that's uh, scribble that's 18 millimeters right um, i want so this table the maximum thickness of it can uh, should be 18 millimeters i think the way we are going to do this is we will take this curve we will move it we'll move it down by a certain angle not angle but uh, we will move it down and z negatively negative negative set uh, by let's say 20 for now 20 millimeters two centimeters and we will loft no so we have the surface here so what we need to do is create this edge here this this ring here and we also need to create um the the bottom bottom is easy uh, we just do boundary boundary surfaces like that or boundary surface the edge is going to be st uh, straight up having this curve here the moved curve and also having the surface and getting the edges burep edges here like that uh, which is going to be of course a closed curve and then using loft between the bottom curve and the top edge here 
and loft doesn't work but if i flatten the input of loft it will and now let's merge all of these into one list so we have the bottom we have the edge and list item gave us the top so we have all three in one big happy family let's flatten out the output of that list uh, of that node and let's use join brep or brep join component and that should be a single closed brep yeah great okay so we have a single closed brep now there's one more thing to do before we finish i need to measure a bounding box I need to get the bounding box of this brep and I need to evaluate evaluate the bounding box at two parameters so one parameter is going to be actually let's do it this way one parameter is going to be at w a value of zero and the other parameter is going to be at w value of one so now I have two points, one in the top, one in the bottom, and I will just uh, measure the distance between them. Distance, create a panel, right click, uh, font settings, I don't know, let's just... So now uh, I know that the height the maximum height of this box is actually 24 millimeters which is not uh not good i need it to be less than 18 millimeters so i need to subtract at least six millimeters from from this value right here right so let's try 14 uh, let's try 13 uh, come on 13 there we go yes 17.75 and now let's make a custom preview uh, let's make a material create material let's give it a swatch um not white maybe something a little bit more orange and it can have a shine a little bit of shine and a little bit of specular whoa specular oh color of specular highlight um sure let's give it a color white greenish okay enough of that that's our form right that that that's what we have and now it's all about just balancing it out which i will do in just a second but now i have a zoom conference to attend to so i'll be right back okay so we are back let's see let's see what we can what we can do with this so here um, you see how two points would work and let me move these points around and as you can see it's not, not that slow it's updating quite quite well um, the main thing is the lack of resolution here so I'm thinking can we is there a way for us to soften this up a bit and make it a little bit more a little bit nicer hmm what if what if we say that before the surface gets split it gets rebuilt rebuilt surface if you don't have rebuilt surface don't don't worry about this uh, this tool right here um, it's not that necessary to use um, i'm just thinking if if this will work because count u and count v we can rebuild it with any amount of points that we want so if we increase the amount of points it should 
Or should, should we simulate this with a large amount of points and then decrease the amount of points here so that it's softer? Yeah, I think, I think that's, that's the, the game plan. So here, let me just do 100 points. So it's virtually 10,000 points. And as you can see, it becomes quite, quite steep. I will need to fix that. Um, but here we can reduce it to 50, so to half of that. And this should make it a little bit more hmm, accurate. No, <laughs> it doesn't. Okay, so we are not rebuilding it. Forget about it, we're not. We are sticking to 100 by 100. So it's a little bit too much for me. Like this, this wavy pattern is a little bit too much. So where we have wave aggressiveness, I will just switch this to a lower value of 3 instead of 5. Something like that. Maybe even less. Uh, let's give it a bit more ripples. Let's give it 50 ripples. Something like that. But less influence, so 2. Stop bleeping. Okay. I think that looks great. Don't you agree? And it's 15.6, so I can actually add one more millimeter to the height. So that's 14. Oh my god, stop. <laughs> there we go. I could, I could add one more millimeter, but that's whatever. And I think that's it. I think that's uh, that's what we have. Uh, I know you are probably interested to, to see how it's going to look like with a single point and how it would look like with three points. So let's do that. Let me delete one, one point. So now this is how it looks like with a single point. Of course, nothing fancy. And let me add point here and point here with three points. It's going to look, set multiple. It's gonna look like this. Nothing too too crazy, but it is what it is. That's interference patterns. Those are interference patterns that you get. If two points are really close to each other, it'll produce some interesting results here. I will be working with only two. So I say I will be working with only two, but I have actually done it. Let me just let me just do one thing and I will show you how this table how does this table look like once it's uh, milled out. Just a second. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Okay, so this is uh, going to be a little bit shitty. The the quality, the webcam quality is not that great. Does it know? How does it know? Anyway, um, I have a few no doubt things here. So this is the single, this is by the, by the way MDF board, nothing special. This is a single point right in the middle, just me checking out the CNC mill, how it behaves. Got a nice table, tabletop. I'm going to make some um, some legs for it in just a second. And when I say a second, I mean like a month. Sorry about that. <laughs> and here is the beauty. Wait, can we get a nice angle? So these two parts are for the cups. And it's just going to be a nice little... Eh, eh. Nice little night table or coffee table, probably coffee table. Uh, this is still rough. Uh, can you actually, you can't really see it, can you? But this is actually still pretty rough. I will be um, adding some coating to it and I will be making it nicer. So once all of the coats are added, it should look pretty professional and pretty nice. 
and of course once it has actual legs right and on which it's going to stand um, I'll keep you updated on that through my Instagram, which you can find if you search my name on Instagram. The either way, hope you enjoyed this small little tutorial. If you couldn't follow the tutorial, the files are going to be available for my Patreons, for my Patreon supporters. Uh, so consider clicking that link in the description and becoming a Patreon supporter. I would be really grateful and also you would get all of the files from all of the tutorials that I've done. Um, and of course all of the money goes into getting more stuff to the channel, for the channel, such as this new microphone, uh, this new microphone that I bought. But the thing is that uh, I actually, actually am now recording from the office so the camera is not not that great but at least the microphone is right right i hope it is i spend a lot actually my wife bought it for me i drew it <laughs> hope you enjoyed this and i'll see you next time bye